Uh, even Australia, if you go around and look at the cultures on the outer ring of Australia, most of them were hand drilled. You penetrate inside the ring, and then you're getting fire saw and fire plow groupings of cultures. Uh, the fire plow being their, their Adelaide or their Woomera, and then they, they hold it like this, and they'll get, a, get another split stick and start doing this. Uh, we're going to get into fire saw in a minute anyway, but, uh, but as time went on, you know, our ancestors were very adaptable, very intelligent people. And they started looking for easier ways to do this or ways to accomplish this with a wider variety of materials. And there you start with the bow drill. Okay. Now you have the development of the bow drill as, as it's prehistoric. I have people argue with me. Bow, bow drill is not prehistoric. Yes, it is. Uh, they have one in the museum in Britain that's 6,000 years old and carbon dated, 6,000. We have the Aztecs using the bow drill when the Spaniards arrived. It's in the codexes and it's in the Spanish reports. Uh, out of Tenochtitlan when they arrived in 1519 in, in, in Mexico. And in fact, there's a, there's a horrific description of a sacrifice where the Aztecs literally ripped the heart out of a guy, and while he's still bouncing around, they put a bow drill in his chest and drill a fire. Uh, oh, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so you want to do a bow okay, drill for us? Are we going to be demonstrating this? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the advanced class? Can I ask your question? Yeah, sure. Let's go to you to that fireboard. Do you have a preference for your drill? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of drills up there on, a, on the board, and, and they're up there because they're from different parts of the United States. Uh, there's stuff from back east, stuff from the northwest, uh, stuff from the southwest. Uh, <laughs> but I like to have the board on the bottom less dense than the drill, or the exact same wood. Is there a reason no uh, fat wasn't on there? Uh, that's what I just drilled with. Oh, it's it's, 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 it's there. called it's called, it's called sequel. Sequel. Oh, okay. sequel. It's really uh, Bacchus glutinosa. Yeah. It is not a true willow. It's a Bacchus related to desert broom in Arizona, uh, and it's in our area. It grows right behind the line of willows on the water. Right, 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 directly behind it, and I've harvested it from northern Arizona all the way to Mexico, but it grows all the way to Honduras. So it's, quite, it's quite prevalent in the West. Yeah, there's a bunch of it back in here. Yeah, anything, almost everything we're doing today, you could do with materials back here, uh, without without modern tools. without modern tools. Okay, you saw what he was using for his hand drill, a fire board and a drill, two parts. That's the downfall of the the uh, bow drill. Bow drill. You need more parts. Bow drill. You got to have a bow. You got to have a drill and fireboard and some way to hold the top of your drill. So you got now you've got four parts instead of two. And the string for five and, parts. And and the the cordage also, yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the ancient people would have to make their own cordage. Uh, would be sinew or fibrous. Uh, we'll, we'll follow me. Yeah, exactly. We'll right. follow, yeah. You'll hear the term compound and composite. Compound is a tool like mm -hmm. this, where the tool is two pieces of wood. Now it's a compound tool because of all things been added to it. Okay, so it's compound. Uh, uh, what was the other word I used? Composite. Composite is uh, one of the drills up there broke and had to be rewired. Or one of my drills in here, here it is, this is a composite. I have a piece of sequel on the bottom, or mule fat, and then I have another stick up here, and I just splice them together. Because I wanted the straight stick, but I wanted that piece of wood for the fire. And this is one hot fire maker, let me tell you. So this, this, is, uh, this is good. Okay, you guys all saw the steps in preparing the board. It's exactly the same. Uh, a lot of times, people in their spare time would be sitting around doing their divots and making their, pre, uh, you know, getting their initial hole, which is what I've done. So I'm going to use one that's already prepared. I'm not going to go from step one. I've already done this in my leisure time. Now, of course, the bow drill gives you far more materials to use. 
Okay, so you can spin the drill faster, you can put more pressure on it. A lot of the drop. Uh, and uh, a longer drop? Draw. Oh, draw. Yeah, we'll do it very oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, and that's a good point. Uh, I have friends that use their whole hands on the hand drill. I cannot. I hit that knuckle there, it's pain. I, I do about, in essence, about two inches is all for my hand drill. Right there. Right there. Right there. Like Al's preferred tools are stone. This is my preferred tool. Mm -hmm. This is my multi-purpose tool. It's got an edge on it. It's got a saw on it for cutting my notches. He mentioned saw. Uh, we're in a search and rescue unit. Everyone in our unit carries something with a saw. It's just such a useful item. Even the pocket knife thing with a saw. It's so useful. Something I really never thought about or discovered until uh, I entered into the search and rescue. We can spend time. We're, we're expected to go out and be self sufficient for 24 hours. And sometimes we are left out there that long. Rescue the people and the deputy will call and say, Don't bring them back. <laughs> say, what? No, it's too dangerous to bring them out in the dark. Make a camp and feed them and throw them and take care of them until it's tomorrow. That's the real trick. You've got to uh, take care of yourself. Exactly. So we carry stuff for them too. We carry clothing, water, gloves, flashlights, food. That's why my pack is almost 40 pounds. Now look how easy that was. Much easier than a hand drill. Yeah. And and look, yeah. look this at the, is, look this at is the, what we teach scouts. Look at the size of that ember compared we to what he had. We've done a lot of scout mm -hmm. programs. The last one we did together had 68 Boy Scouts. And this is the method you teach a Boy Scout. We call it shoelace and pocket knife fire. And once you get an ember, you're not in a hurry to dump that in the in the tinder bundle. It will smolder for a long time. Actually, sometimes it's better to let it smolder and build up so more of it is, is hot and burning before you dump it in your tinder bundle. What is that bundle mean? Same thing, cottonwood root. Cottonwood or cottonwood bark. bark. You go to a dead cottonwood tree and pull off that real thick bark. This is on the inside, the cambium mesh. Yeah. But we have this all kinds of things that work. You go up to Flagstaff, clip rose bark. Go up to Utah, bark off of... Uh, uh, what's, that, what's, that, what's that plant Juniper. there? Juniper. No, no, no. The bushy one. Uh, that's sage. Bark off of sage is very, very flammable. Uh, cattail. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff on the board there too, stuff. And then on the far right, what we call ember extenders. And the best on that ember extender group is moose scat. Moose scat is wonderful stuff for extending in ember. In our area, rabbit scat works really well. Elk scat. Yeah. Find the right scat tree. Ember, ember yeah. extender is just something you can add to your ember to make it bigger so it will smolder longer. Or especially get bigger so you have a bigger ember to work with. Especially in bad weather. <laughs> especially yeah. in bad weather, yeah. Yeah. Now, is there anything about what you do? Pardon? Or we saw it, but do you want to say anything about what you do? Yeah. Well, you saw it was exactly the same as the hand drill, except instead of spinning it with my hand, I was spinning it with a stick. After, after this is over, from now until the end of the week, Feel free to drop in yeah. to our campsite, and we will give you one-on-one -on -one instructions. You will have yeah. a kit to take home with you. We're going to sit you down and work with you, make a bow drill kit, or and or uh, make an Arctic strap drill kit, which he's going to demo. At. I'm going to do another demo of another method, and then he's going to demo the Arctic strap drill, which is what we tend to carry as our big lighter. We almost all of us have uh, a strap drill with us. Uh, I'll talk about that <laughs> and why. <laughs> I'll talk about it when, when he's doing it, why those cultures went to that.